With Danny Kaye still overseas entertaining the G.I.s in the Pacific, Jack Benny, Eddie Cantor, Ed Gardner in Duffy's Tavern, and tonight, George Burns and Gracie Allen. Yes, it's George and Gracie with Bill Goodwin and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. in at the Burns home today, we find Gracie talking to her next-door neighbor, Meredith Wilson. Oh, so you see, Meredith, the sale ends today. I've just got to get that new hat. And George won't give you the money? Not a penny. Now, I've used up my budget. I even used up my mad money. Gosh, I didn't know married women had mad money. Well, I call it mad money. My husband went mad and gave me $5. <laughs> And uh, that's gone too, huh? Yes. Well, I sent it to my poor Uncle Tim so he could get himself some glasses. Oh, that was nice. Yes. Uncle Tim got tired of drinking out of bottles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure would like to lend you the money for the hat, Gracie, but I'm broke too. Oh, merit of shame. You should have some money saved up. It was two months ago that George auditioned you, and you've been on our program ever since. I know. I wonder how much longer I have to audition before he starts paying me. <laughs> well, George is a little slow making up his mind. I remember when he auditioned me about 10 years ago. <laughs> I was awfully worried at first. You were? Yes, but no more. I'm sure he's gonna hire me. <laughs> I hope he hires me too. Well, I guess we've both got a problem, Meredith. Yeah. But I've just gotta get that new fall hat. Can't you think of some way I can get the money out of George? Well, uh, Gracie, you're Irish. Why don't you try a little Blarney? Y you mean flatter the little rascal? <laughs> well, sure. Well, maybe you're right. Flattery will work on any red-blooded man. Yeah. It might even work on George. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shh. Here he comes. Good morning, Meredith. Morning, George. Good morning, Gracie. George, don't move. Huh? Stand there and let me look at you. Oh, oh you're so incredibly handsome. <laughs> oh. I am? If only I were a sculptor. Let the others make statues of Apollo and Mercury and Hercules. You're the man I want to chisel. <laughs> Oh, Gracie. How, how did they ever pack so much man into one body? When I stop and realize that you're mine, all mine, it, it just frightens me. Oh, honey. 
how did great, big, gorgeous, attractive you ever come to marry little, bitty, gorgeous, attractive me? <laughs> Look, Gracie. Oh, come on, hot lips. Tell me you love me. I love you. No, no. Put some feeling into it. I love you. <gasps> Do you really, darling? Yes. Oh, that's good. Uh, George. No, you can't have a new hat. <laughs> but George. Flattery will get you no place. Flattery? I was telling the truth, wasn't I, Meredith? Why, absolutely, George. Why, you're sensational. You're a, uh, you're a trumpet solo by Harry James. You're a, uh, take-off chorus by Artie Shaw. You're a, a Gershwin melody performed by the Benny Goodman Quintet. Boy, you're solid. Gee, quintet, gee. Well, that washes me up in music. <laughs> I thought so. So it was flattery and Meredith was in on it. But George... Look, honey, you don't have to flatter me to get things. I don't? Of course not. When you want something, just come right out and ask me. That's the way to get it. All right. George, can I have a new hat? No. <laughs> I like the other way better. I thought I was getting someplace. Come in. Hi, folks. Mind if I sit down for a minute? I'm a little shaky. But what's the matter, Bill? Well, I was driving over here, and I had a terrible accident. Oh, my goodness. Was it bad, Bill? Oh, it was awful, George. I was driving along, see, and there was a beautiful girl standing on the street corner. So I swung over to the curb and said, Hi, gorgeous, hop in. Well, what happened then? She didn't hop in. Must have been an accident. <laughs> thought you were hurt. Yeah, I'm disappointed, too. <laughs> Say, I didn't know you had a car, Bill. Well, it isn't mine, George. It belongs to Danny Kay, and he asked me to keep it while he's on his USO tour. Oh, gee, that Danny Kay has such a wonderful personality, and so charming and so talented. Then he does all right with the girls, too. Oh, uh, you're not kidding, Gracie. They mobbed the guy. When I took him to the station, thousands of women crowded around him and grabbed him. They shook him and said, Ooh, Danny! Danny! Introduce us to Bill Goodwin! <laughs> oh, brother. But kids about... Oh, this... brother. Oh, brother. <laughs> but kids about this car at Danny's, I've got a little problem. No garage to keep it in. Could I keep it in yours? Well, could we, uh, could we use it now and then ourselves? Well, sure, why not? Oh, that would be wonderful. Our car is in the shop being repaired. Really? What's wrong with it? Well, the other day I had a letter to mail, so I drove into the post office. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Drove into the post office. That's all? You just that's drove into the post there. office? Well, that's the darndest thing I ever heard. Gracie, I hope you'll be more careful with Danny's car. Don't worry. I'll do all the driving myself, and I've never even dented a fender. Well, that's fine, George. When Danny left, I promised him I'd take care of two things. His movie contract with Goldwyn and his car. I'm on my way over to talk to Goldwyn now, so let's at least leave him a car to come home to. <laughs> so long, so long. Oh, my, it'll be fun to have a nice car like Danny Case to ride in, won't it, dear? Yes. Well, let's take a ride tonight. Just you and me in the moonlight on a dark country road. I'll snuggle up real close and put my new hat on your shoulder. There won't be any new hat. But I only want it for your sake so that people will notice me. I want them to say, there goes the wife of that clever, handsome, smart George Burns. <laughs> that witty George Burns. That intelligent George Burns. No hat. No hat, no. <laughs> George, why don't you want me to buy a hat? Because you always get such ridiculous, outlandish hats. I do not. You do, too. What would you say if I came home with a, with a, with a derby that had a flagpole uh, sticking through the crown and two toy jeeps racing around the brim? Oh, George, that sounds darling. Where did you see it? At Newman. Oh, I, I did so <laughs> Thank you. 
George, I've been thinking about what I did, and I want to apologize. What did you do? Well, I deliberately flattered you to try and get a new hat. I feel cheap and ashamed of myself. Oh, don't feel bad. It was bad. a low, mean, vulgar thing to do. Oh, honey. I hate I... myself for such sneaking, underhanded, vile trickery. <laughs> I didn't mind. I'll tell you something. It almost worked. One more compliment, and I'd have given in. You're incredibly handsome, All George. All right. <laughs> Told you, that's no way to get things. <laughs> ah, you're right, George. Flattery never works. Now, let's say, for example, that I wanted to ask you to let me use Danny Kaye's car this morning. Don't waste your breath. Now, I'm not asking for it, but if I were asking for it, I'd forget flattery and just appeal to your intelligence. Right. Because you're too clever for flattery. Certainly. The way to appeal to a busy, brainy man like you is to just ask for the car honestly, and you'll say, well, sure, Gracie, take it. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, George. <laughs> now, wait a you minute. You promised. Look, honey, I wouldn't mind if you were a good driver, but you're not. Harry Morton next door says you ruined his elm tree backing out of the driveway. Oh, that's a man for you, exaggerating. I ran over one teensy, tiny little branch clear at the top of the tree. <laughs> How could you run over a branch at the top of the tree? The tree was lying across our driveway. Well, didn't you see it? How could I? It wasn't lying there until I hit it. <laughs> oh, fine. And you want to borrow Danny Kay's car? But I only want to do a little shopping. I won't drive more than ten blocks. Shopping for what? Well, I want to buy some cherries and grapes and maybe a pork roast. Well, I did turn you down about the hat and... You're only going ten blocks. Oh, thank you, George, and I'll need a little money. Okay. Here you are. But, honey, drive carefully. Keep your hands on the wheel, your foot on the brakes, your mouth closed, your, eye, your ears open, and your eyes on the road. Well, is it all right if my nose just hangs there and rests? <laughs> now, never mind being flip. Just see that you have Danny Kay's car back here without a scratch on it. All right, dear. Well, I guess that finished our shopping, Meredith I parked the car right over here Gosh, Gracie, how did you ever manage to work George for the car and the money, too? Well, I told George I wanted to buy some cherries and grapes and a pork roast But you didn't buy those things I bought everything but the pork roast <laughs> Couldn't find a hat with a pork roast on it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you sure are a shrewd girl, Gracie. Yeah, I know. It, it's so unfair to George. With my looks, he has every right to expect dumbness. <laughs> well, here's the car. Oh, will George be surprised to see us get home without a scratch on Danny's car? <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? That park car ran right into it. Gracie, you backed into it, and you bent our back fender till it looks like a pretzel. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Are you having trouble? Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. You two seem to be on a bender. <laughs> <laughs> I made a little joke, but I guess you're not in the mood for levity. Well, I'm afraid not, Mr. Postman. You think there's much damage done? Well, your rear bumper is out of shape, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> well, did I hurt the other car? A little, but don't worry about it. I know the old biddy who owns it. She's a sourpuss. But I should pay for any damage. No, let her husband pay for it. Anyone who'd marry an old battle axe like that deserves to be stuck. Well, all right. Who does the car belong to? My wife. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Well, Gracie, I backed Danny's car into the garage for you. Oh, thank you, Bill. Anything to keep George from seeing that back fender. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about it. Well, it can be fixed, Gracie. But, of course, when George finds out, he'll hit the roof. Yeah, well, this has taught me a lesson. 
I hereby solemnly swear that I will never lie or deceive my husband again as long as I live. Unless I'm positive it'll work. Hey, here comes George up the walk now. <gasps> Uh-oh. He's here for the car. What'll I do? Well, calm down, Gracie. Maybe I can square this whole thing for you. I got a little idea. Say, Gracie, who backed the car into the garage? Why, uh, uh, I did, didn't I, Bill? Oh, sure. Really? I didn't know you were that good. Oh, yes. I back into lots of things that you don't know about. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're improving. I'm going to drive down to the office now. Goodbye, dear. Well, goodbye. Oh, Bill, what if he sees the fender? Well, leave everything to me, Gracie. Oh, wait a minute, George. Say, George, uh, do you mind dropping me at Hollywood and Vine? I got to pick up a cute little girl there at 3 o'clock. Bill, I don't go to Hollywood and Vine. I go to Wilshire and La Brea. Oh. Well, okay, I'll pick one up there at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Get in, Bill. Hold it, George. Hold it. What's the matter? You're running right into the side of the garage. Back up. Huh? Come on, back up, back up. Okay. More, George, more. Come on, farther. Oh! You smashed the whole back end of Danny's car. <laughs> what? I barely touched Well, come on. Let's get out and look at the damage. Oh, murder, George. Look what you've done. Gee, I can't believe it. That fender is folded up like an accordion. Gracie, you'll never let me live this down. You're not kidding. Uh, say, Bill. Huh? Is there maybe some way that you could make Gracie believe that she did this? <laughs> what? You want me to stoop to deceit and trickery? <laughs> Well, I just You thought... want me to make someone who didn't do this believe they did? Well, I just... I'm surprised at you, George. Well, forget it. Forget Shame it. on you. I won't do it. All right, all you right. You dirty person. Okay. You okay. want to end up in Alice's ass? Now, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. Tonight, he presents his chiffon arrangement of If I Loved You.
Shell? Yeah? I'm in an awful spot. After me lecturing Gracie about her driving, if she finds out I smashed this fender, I'm a dead duck. Well, now, calm down, George. I'm the only one who knows. I'm the only one who could tell her. <laughs> and, uh, you wouldn't tell her, would you, Bill? <laughs> would you, Bill? <laughs> Bill, look at me. Bill, old pal, you... <laughs> George, I've been thinking. Maybe we should make a few changes in your radio program. What? Well, just minor changes. For example, you know the opening where I say George Burns and Gracie Allen? Yes. Well, from now on, that'll be It's Bill Goodwin time, starring Bill Goodwin. <laughs> now, Bill... Yes, sir, folks, presenting that handsome, talented young star of stage, screen, radio, and television, Dimples Goodwin. <laughs> in 30 minutes of solid commercial. Look, Bill, I'm not gonna let you or anybody else take over my program. I've worked hard to get where I am. I struggled, I starved, but I finally made it. I achieved success. You married Grace. I married Grace. No. <laughs> well, what if I tell her about Defender? No, I'm gonna tell her myself. If she loves me, she'll forgive me. Go and write her now and confess everything. <laughs> Gracie, I've been watching the garage through the kitchen window, and George didn't leave. He's heading for the house right now. <gasps> Uh-oh, maybe he saw the fender I smashed. Oh, there'll be an awful fight if he did. I, uh, <clears throat> I think I'd better leave, Gracie. I might be tempted to stick up for the weaker sex. Uh, let George look out for himself. <laughs> uh, the best thing for me is to just confess everything. If he loves me, he'll forgive me. Gracie, I'd uh, like George, to... George, before you say anything, um... Don't you think that when married people do something that other married people don't like, married people should forgive married people? Uh, especially if they're married? We are married, aren't we, George? Yes, and I'm glad you feel that way, Gracie, because I've got a little confession to make. Well, so have I, but you go first. No. No, ladies first. Oh, no, no, that doesn't count. You go first in this house because you're the boss. I am? Well, you are when it fits in with what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I'll make my confession, then you make your confession. All right. I smashed the fender on Danny Kay's car. Well, now for mine. I smashed... You what? I backed up and smashed the fender. Oh, oh, you did, huh? Yeah, and now I feel better because I've confessed and you'll forgive me. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I don't like the sound of that I do <laughs> Forgive you indeed Imagine refusing to let me drive the car And then going out on a wild joyride But I only Tearing through traffic at 80 miles an hour but all Locking I... Locking down widows and orphans. Okay, okay, you've got me over a barrel. Uh-uh, I got you over a hat box. Hat box? That's right. Remember the hat you said I couldn't get? Yeah. Well, I'm keeping it. <laughs> oh, so you already had it. Now, see... Smashing through red lights, bumping into Greyhound buses. Okay, keep the hat. No, oh, sure, and I'll get a dress to match it. Okay. And gloves to match the dress. Aren't you carrying this a little too far? Waving at blondes, throwing empty bottles into the street. Get the gloves, get the gloves. Sure, and a bag to match them. Smashing the car so badly that even the smiling Irishman wouldn't buy it. <laughs> now, look here, all I did was... Yeah, well, answer the door, Barney Oldfield. Yes, dear. Well, hurry up, Los Angeles driver. <laughs> yes, dear. Good afternoon, Mr. Burns. Here's your mail. Thanks, Mr. Postman. My goodness, you sound low. Having trouble with your wife? Yes. Me too. <laughs> Women are beasts, aren't they? <laughs> but we men are so gullible. Along comes a pretty face and we're hooked. Yeah. Come to think of it, I haven't even got that excuse. <laughs> oh, well. 
I guess you're happy that your wife wasn't hurt in the accident this morning. The what? Oh, it wasn't serious. She just backed into my wife's car and crumpled your fender. Gracie crumpled the fender? Yes. I always say that it takes a woman to be a woman driver. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're so right. <clears throat> Well, goodbye, Mr. Postman. Goodbye, Mr. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. Well, who was it, Speedy? The postman. Ah, well, as I was saying, I think I'll get a fur coat, too. Maybe a red fox... Did you say the postman? <laughs> That's right. He, um, just delivered the mail, huh? Ha! <laughs> Yes, he didn't. A fine thing. So you and Bill try to put one over on me? Yes, dear. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yes, dear. Did you take me for a complete idiot? Yes, dear. <laughs> and that hat goes back to the store. Goes back? Yes. All right, dear. If you say so. Oh, honey, honey, don't cry. I can't stand to see you cry. Oh. All right, all right. You dry your tears, you can keep the hat. You really? Well, sure, honey. Now, why didn't I think of this method in the first place? I've been had it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of George and Gracie, Meredith and myself, it's been a lot of fun pinch hitting for Danny Kay tonight. Good night, everyone. Radio Service.